former CIA director, he ran the whole thing, Michael Hayden. He might have it in for the former president. He apparently thinks Republicans are more dangerous than global extremists. Last week, a British, I know, last week a British journalist tweeted, I've covered extremism and violent ideologues around the world over my career. I've never come across a political force more nihilistic, dangerous, and contemptible than today's Republicans. Nothing close. Nothing close? What? Wow, are you new? Do you have a head injury? Have you, have you, are you like Nell? Have you been living in the forest just making up words? Hayden chimed in last night tweeting, I agree, and I was the CIA director. Wow, did all the domestic spying fry these brains? Let's get into it with tonight's party panel. We've got townhall.com editor and Fox News contributor Katie Pavlich is here. We've also got retired Marine Sergeant, American hero and Fox News contributor Joey Jones and president of the Mises Institute, Jeff Deist. Yes. Also justifies the skepticism that a lot of people have about their federal government, especially uh, agencies who can do clandestine great harm, mm -hmm. Jeff. Well, this guy is yet another gift from the Bush family. Thanks very much. <laughs> and, you know, he may be retired. I assume he still receives a federal pension or two based on being in the Air Force, NSA, and CIA. So he's tweeting, and he's just a perfect example of this mindset of the CIA and other administrative agencies acting like they don't work for anyone. They don't work for a particular president. They think that they work for the Constitution, the American people in some lofty sense, and it's their job to call out uh, what they see as, as deformities or injustices in our system. But I think Katie Pavlich makes an important point. Well, the question is, if you really believe your rhetoric, Mr. Hayden, about Republicans or, let's say, Trumpers, deplorables, January 6 people, insurrectionists, MAGA people in the United States, if you really believe it, what do you think should be done? In other words, mm -hmm. if you think these are fascist insurrection insurrectionists, would it be okay to lie? Uh, would it be okay to uh, yeah. de destabilize an election somehow? Would it be okay to imprison them or prevent them from voting? Uh, I mean, if you really think this is a fascist threat to the United States on the level of domestic terror, mm -hmm. then presumably it's okay to do almost anything clandestinely yep. or openly to thwart this. And they never seem to answer that question. They just paint people with a terrible brush. I really hate these hacks from these administrative agencies. They need to shut up. They need a gag order when they retire. Yeah, absolutely, because they still, uh, their words have weight, and they still bear a yeah. great deal of responsibility. But, you know, maybe to Joey's point, he's uh, psychologically infirmed. All right, meanwhile, Abraham Lincoln herself, Liz Cheney, she might be planning a, quote, revenge tour. Hell hath no fury like a Cheney scorned. After this week's primary loss, this according to the Wall Street Journal, she told NBC a presidential run, it's not out of the question, you guys. Mm, Are you less. thinking about running for president? It, it, uh, that's a decision that I'm going to make in the, in the coming months. I will be doing whatever it takes to keep Donald Trump out of the Oval Office. Well, I <laughs> oh, she's like George Conway in a bad pantsuit. Uh, anything to keep Trump out, huh? But could her blind fury split the same Republican Party she claims to be trying to save? Jeff, do you think uh, she is fooling into people, uh, fooling people into thinking that she is in fact Dick Cheney? <laughs> well, the, the Cheneys are done. The Bushes are done. The Clintons are hopefully done. I mean, this is a woman who just lost a congressional seat overwhelmingly. Voters are telling her, go away. And so what does she do? She says, no, I, I don't think I'll go away. In fact, I think I'll run for president, maybe. Right? In, in business, if you go bankrupt, that's a signal you should do something different next time around. But she's not going to get any traction. I mean, look, look, look who took on Trump last time, Jeb Bush. Scott McConnell, or, or um, the, I'm sorry, Scott Walker from Wisconsin. I mean, there were a lot of big names that went up against him, and, and Trump prevailed. I don't know that Trump's going to be the nominee. I think DeSantis is, is certainly a, a, a strong consideration, too. But I guess what's just interesting here is the hubris. There's this sort of yeah. weariness about her, as though she deserves this. And she's, you know, she's not, she doesn't really live in Wyoming. She was in and out of Jackson Hole, which is the fancy schmancy. Oh, yeah. Uh, part of the state, and it, the, the whole thing is so is unholy, and it, and it it just reeks, it just reeks of entitlement. Yeah, uh, and and that's exactly it. And and oftentimes the 
the half-baked spawn of dynasties. They, they do feel entitled to something because they've been given so yeah. much and they do so little with it. All right, uh, <laughs> Jeff, panel, thank you all so much.